lot of people worry about food additives, such as colorings and dyes that are added to food. The way these, the way these things are regulated is by the Food and Drug Administration, which classifies them in various categories related to how toxic they are in relation to causing cancer in animals, uh, substances which are shown to have a low risk of promoting cancer or DNA damage in animals, gets a rating of GRAS, gen, uh, generally recognized as safe. So I don't want to talk a lot about food additives other than to say that a lot of them are in your food supplements, sports supplements that you use as various colorings and dyes and also in some of the uh, uh, supplement pills. Uh, usually most of these, quite frankly, are inert. They really don't do much. There's not a lot of it used in these supplements. They just basically pass through you. Uh, if you if you ingested a large quantity of, of certain food additives, you probably would have some problems, but nobody ever really does that. But I want to talk about Today, I want to talk about one in particular. This stuff is called titanium dioxide, and it's ubiquitous. It's in a lot of different things. It's actually produced, it's a natural substance. It's produced from three kind of uh, esoteric minerals that are, if I named them, they wouldn't, I, I doubt that anybody would ever recognize these particular minerals, except for possibly people with geology degrees. I never heard of them myself. But anyway, that's where t titanium is, uh, dioxide is produced from. Uh, what it's used for, it imparts a, a very bright white color to paints. It's used in the manufacture of, of, uh, of uh, paper and plastics, printing ink, uh, printing ink cosmetics. It's even used as a, a pigment in tattoos. Uh, and it's also a popular use for it is in sunscreens because it reflects UV light. Therefore, it protects your skin from uh, burning and getting uh, possibly skin cancer. Uh, it, it, so, you know, it's... It, it's uh, but you have to understand, though, that... Let me, let me say the best way to, to differentiate the problems with titanium dioxide is to understand that whether it's going to be a problem depends on the size of the particle of titanium dioxide. In most cases, such as, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, uh, the ones that are used in, food, in most foods, uh, these things are larger particles of titanium dioxide. So they basically are inert. Uh, they, they tend to pass right through you. Uh, some of the sunscreens actually have titanium dioxide in what they call nanoparticle size. A nanoparticle is extremely small. It's microscopic. This is the titanium dioxide, which can prove very problematic for health because it's absorbed at a much greater rate than the larger particles. Uh, titanium uh, dioxide is also commonly used in, uh, in whitening toothpaste because it in part for two reasons. It imparts a, an abrasive quality, and it also has that whitening effect. Uh, and I should also point out that whitening toothpaste are not a good product to use if you want to have healthy teeth because it also scrapes off the tooth, tooth enamel eventually. So I would avoid them. Uh, I had an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's called Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye. It was a complete dental system that not only saves your teeth and, and keeps your gums healthy, but also cuts your dental bills down to almost nothing. It's a certain system. I've used it myself for years, and it really works. Uh, titanium dioxide is also found in shaving cream, shampoos, and deodorants. And uh, it, like I say, it's used in supplements. In supplements, it's uh, often added as an anti-caking agent to prevent clumping of the, let's say, certain types of powders. It's also used as a coloring dye in food and uh, vitamin supplements. Uh, the number one selling vitamin supplement in the country, which I doubt is used by most bodybuilders because it's a crappy supplement, is called Centrum. Centrum uses titanium dioxide as a coloring agent. And also titanium dioxide is used, and this is nanos, nanoparticle amounts, is used in GNC vitamin supplements. So GNC supplements also contain, it's all, it's, uh, titanium dioxide is also found in energy drinks, canned fish, and even cottage cheese. When it's added to chocolate, it imparts a smooth texture to the chocolate. Uh, now, if you breathe in titanium dust, 
which of course is not likely unless you're involved in some sort of industrial job or something like that. Breathing in the dust does impose a definite cancer effect. Titanium dust is a established carcinogen, what they call a type B, type 2B carcinogen. So titanium in dust form when it's inhaled is definitely without question a carcinogen. Now, let's talk about these nanoparticles. A 2017 study showed that nanoparticles of titanium oxide, and this is the, this is the reason I did this video, by the way, this new study just came out. What it showed was that particles of, of nanoparticles uh, of titanium ex, uh, oxide can slowly destroy what's known as the microvilli in the small intestine. What's the microvilli? The microvilli are these little small projections that line the small intestine, but they're important because these are the conduits of nutrient absorption. All your vitamins, minerals, amino acids, they're all absorbed by the microvilli that line the intestine. And the nanoparticles of titanium dioxide slowly destroy the microvilli. I mean, you don't have to be a scientist to figure out the implications here. In other words, what's going to happen is your, your ability to absorb nutrients will gradually get lower. This will definitely affect muscular gains, and of course, it will affect health also. Uh, another thing that titanium dioxide nanoparticles do is it, is it weakens the intestinal barrier. They're what they call tight junctions that keep the intestinal cells together. It kind of weakens that. It allows... Uh, intestinal bacteria from the colon to enter into the uh, into the uh, intestine, into the small intestine, and then into the blood. Uh, the, this bacteria releases something called endotoxins, which can cause a systemic inflammation, cause all kinds of diseases. This is known as the leaky gut syndrome. A lot of gastroenterologists and doctors don't think it, it really exists, but there's a, lot, there's a pretty good amount of evidence showing that it does exist. And the point here is that titanium dioxide nanoparticles can actually cause this leaky gut syndrome effect. A 2012 study from the University of Arizona found that titanium dioxide exists in 89 commonly consumed food products, with 5% of them containing the nanoparticles that damage your uh, microvilli in the small intestine. So 5% of foods containing titanium dioxide are, are in the form of nanoparticles, which is very, very damaging to the intestine. And as I said, nanoparticles are the main problem because uh, of the much greater absorption rate. The smaller the particles, the greater absorption rate. The larger particles of titanium dioxide, they don't really get absorbed that well, so they cause less damage. Foods with the highest content, in case you want to know, foods with the highest content of titanium dioxide include chewing gum, candy, especially red candy, powdered donuts, icings on cakes, even Twinkies, of course. Serious bodybuilders are not likely to eat these foods except possibly on junk days, but the point is that processed foods and, high, and sweetened foods tend to contain titanium dioxide. You want to keep away from this crap even on the day the days that you do go off your diet. Up to 36% of the titanium dioxide used in 90 food products are nanoparticles. 36% of the titanium dioxide used in food is in the form of nanoparticles. And, and, and again, another study showed that these same nanoparticles can cause chromosome damage, which leads to cancer. So even the nanoparticles are also carcinogenic. The nanoparticles can also damage mitochondria. Mitochondria are the, uh, the cigar-shaped organelles found in cells where energy is produced in the form of ATP and fat is burned in the, in the process known as beta-oxidation. Uh, titanium dioxide nanoparticles are particularly effective at destroying mitochondria in the brain. When that happens, you get brain degeneration diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Folks, this is bad stuff, titanium dioxide. And the reason I did this video is because I don't see a lot of publicity about this, but everyone should know about this. This is this crap should be avoided. Uh, the, the, in relation to the uh, the brain function, the, the, the titanium dioxide nanoparticles, they to particularly focus on on particular brain cells called astrocytes. And uh, what happens is when, when these astrocytes get slowly destroyed, 
the, you get an accumulation of, a, of an amino acid called glutamate in the brain. And the uh, significance here is excess glutamate is what they call an excitatory neurotransmitter that actually destroys neurons. In fact, when you get a stroke, your, body uh, your brain releases an abundance of glutamate and this is what's considered the main cause of brain damage after a stroke, an excess release of glutamate. And uh, as I say, titanium dioxide nanoparticles, when they get in the brain, they destroy the astrocytes, which, uh, which uh, kind of control glutamate release. So you more or less get the same effect as you would get from having a stroke, but it's a little bit slower. You get a slow form of brain damage. So that's what I wanted to say here today. Uh, you know, check the labels of foods. If you're not sure of something, contact the manufacturer. Keep away from sugary processed foods, candy, all that crap that where titanium dioxide is used as a coloring agent. Uh, it's used in toothpaste, some toothpaste, but you're not going to swallow the toothpaste, so it's not going to be a problem. It is used in some, some screens, but usually it doesn't go any further than the epidermis or top layer of the skin. So it's not going to get into your body, but I'd still avoid it anyway, just for, you know, because like I say, it's a kind of a borderline carcinogen. Why would you want to put, I mean, most people are putting on uh, tanning lotions to prevent skin cancer. Why would you put on something that's a, that can actually cause skin, possibly cause skin cancer? It's kind of stupid. But anyway, uh, you'll find a lot of information about nutrition, supplementation, ergogenic aids, uh, uh, fat loss research, anti-aging research. Uh, just about everything off the road stuff that you won't see uh, on web blogs and and, and uh, internet uh, sites. It's uh, uh, it's all in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Forty to fifty pages every month. It's like having a monthly ebook. You will learn something in every newsletter. I guarantee it. I promise it. I promise you. And every article you read, you will have no questions by the end of the article about the topic of that article. I guarantee that too. So apply, uh, I'm sorry, su su subscribe today at applied www.appliedmetabolics.com if you want to know the whole truth and nothing but. It's one of the last bastions of truth related to exercise, nutrition, and health that's available on this planet. If you want to also be happy, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the best beings on earth. Thank you for listening. <laughs>